This is the story of the horrific Krakatoa eruption and tsunami of 1883, one of the largest volcanic eruptions in recorded history, which occurred during solar maximum cycle number 12. Isn't that a strange coincidence? Mainly because we are at maximum solar number 25 now. Being at the maximum of the solar cycle implies that the probability of having very strong events on the sun is higher. These events, when extreme, can trigger earthquakes, volcanoes, and even affect our health, according to several scientific studies. They can also send all of humanity back to the Stone Age. The rapid shift of the Earth's magnetic poles that we have experienced recently and the weakening of the magnetic field give us clues about a probable excursion or reversal of the magnetic poles that could also lead to major catastrophes. But did you know that authorities in the nearby island of the Philippines sent thousands of different seed samples a few days ago to the Arctic Doomsday Vault? The Arctic Doomsday Vault, officially the Spalbar Global Seed Vault, is a secure seed bank located in a mountain on a Norwegian island in the Arctic. It's a global backup of seed collections, designed to safeguard the genetic diversity of our food crops. Its purpose is to act as a failsafe against the loss of these vital resources due to natural disasters or other catastrophes. It stores millions of seed samples from around the world, ensuring a backup of plant biodiversity for future generations. Another strange coincidence? The air is thick with unease. On the small islands surrounding Krakatoa, life goes on, but the earth beneath our feet feels restless. Fishermen casting their nets in the Sunda Strait glance nervously at the volcanic island in the distance. Krakatoa, once dormant, has been rumbling for weeks. Plumes of smoke rise from its peaks, and the occasional tremor sends ripples across the water. The Dutch colonial authorities in Batavia, modern-day Jakarta, have issued warnings, but for most of us, life is too demanding to dwell on the distant threat. We have crops to tend, fish to catch, and families to feed. Still, the whispers of an impending disaster grow louder with each passing day. The tremors are stronger now. The ground shakes several times a day, and the explosions from Krakatoa can be heard as far as 100 miles away. The sky is often darkened by ash, and the sunsets are eerily beautiful, painted in hues of red and orange. On the island of Sevasi, just north of Krakatoa, villagers are beginning to evacuate. The Dutch authorities have sent ships to assist, but many refuse to leave their homes. It's just a volcano, they say. It will settle down. But the scientists monitoring the activity are not so sure. They record the increasing frequency of eruptions and warn of a potential catastrophe. Still, life persists. Children play in the ash-covered streets, and merchants sell their wares as if nothing is amiss. The tension is palpable. Krakatoa is now erupting almost continuously, and the explosions are deafening. The ashfall is so heavy that it blankets entire villages, making it difficult to breathe. On the island of Java, just 30 miles from Krakatoa, the air is thick with the smell of sulfur. The Dutch authorities have declared a state of emergency, urging everyone within a 50-mile radius to evacuate. But for many, it's too late. The ships are overcrowded, and the roads are clogged with panicked families trying to flee. In Vitavia, the streets are filled with refugees, their faces covered in ash, their eyes wide with fear. The scientists predict that the worst is yet to come, but no one knows when or how it will happen. The world feels like it's holding its breath. Krakatoa is now in a state of constant eruption, with massive explosions occurring every few minutes. The sky is a swirling mass of ash and smoke, and the sun is barely visible. On the island of Sumatra, just 25 miles from Krakatoa, the ground shakes so violently that buildings collapse. The Dutch authorities have given up on trying to maintain order. Their focus is now on saving as many lives as possible. Ships are dispatched to evacuate the remaining villagers, but the seas are too rough and the ash is too thick. Many are left behind, praying for a miracle. As night falls, the eruptions grow more intense, lighting up the sky with bursts of fire. The explosions are so loud that they can be heard in Australia, over 2,000 miles away.
The morning begins with a deafening roar. Krakatoa's final eruption is underway. The explosions are unlike anything anyone has ever heard. On the islands closest to the volcano, the ground shakes so violently that it feels like the world is coming apart. The sky is pitch black and the air is filled with the sound of crashing waves and falling debris. The first tsunami hits the coast of Java just minutes after the initial explosion. Waves as high as 100 feet crash onto the shore, sweeping away entire villages. The water is filled with debris, trees, houses, and bodies, all churning in a chaotic frenzy. The largest explosion occurs at noon. It is so powerful that it is heard as far as 3,000 miles away in the Indian Ocean. The shock wave circles the globe seven times, and the force of the eruption is equivalent to 200 megatons of TNT 13,000 times more powerful than the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima. The island of Krakatoa is completely obliterated, collapsing into the sea and creating a massive caldera. The resulting tsunami is even more devastating than the first, with waves reaching heights of 120 feet. The coastal towns of Java and Sumatra are wiped off the map as the sun sets the eruptions begin to subside, but the damage is done. The sky is still dark with ash, and the air is thick with the smell of sulfur. The survivors are in shock, their faces blank with disbelief. The once thriving villages along the coast are now nothing more than piles of rubble, and the sea is littered with debris. The Dutch authorities are overwhelmed, struggling to provide aid to the thousands of refugees. The Unilev toll is estimated to be over 36,000, but the true number may never be known. The ash cloud has begun to disperse, but the world is still reeling from the disaster. The skies are filled with strange colors, and the sunsets are more vivid than ever. The global climate is affected, with temperatures dropping by as much as 1.2 degrees Celsius in the following year. The survivors are slowly beginning to rebuild their lives, but the memory of the disaster will haunt them forever. The Dutch authorities have declared the area around Krakatoa a no-go zone, and scientists are closely monitoring the volcano for any signs of further activity. The coastal towns of Java and Sumatra are slowly being rebuilt, but the process is slow and painful. The survivors are still in shock, and many are struggling to come to terms with what happened. The Dutch authorities have launched an investigation into the disaster, but the truth is clear. Krakatoa was a force of nature, and there was nothing anyone could have done to stop it. The Krakatoa event of 1883 remains one of the most powerful and destructive volcanic eruptions in recorded history. It serves as a stark reminder of the awesome power of nature and the fragility of human life. The survivors' stories are a testament to the resilience of the human spirit, but they also serve as a warning. We must always be prepared for the unexpected, for nature can be both beautiful and deadly.